Oh Fisher. No, stop. Rashad Taylor across the faux marble table. Stop, man. That's not how we start the show. What? I, it's morning. What? Joe Fish, let's go. You have something to say. It's way too much energy for you? No, no, not enough, man. Where's the good morning? That's your thing. Oh, dude. That's your thing, bro. <laughs> let's go. Start again. And go. Good morning. We Welcome go. into Sports Sunday. Yes. Joe Fisher, Rashad Taylor. That was way too cool. Jordan Schultz on the ones and twos. Hey, listen, I'm lagging ass a little bit today. <laughs> Woo. All right? Hey, guys. I feel that. It's bad, Joe. Dude. I'm tired. No, I'm tired. Man, I haven't seen my guys in a couple weeks, man. I need that same energy that I'm I'm used to, man. It's good to have you back, brother. It's let, good to see my dudes, man. What's let me up? Uh, let me slurp down some more of my energy drink here. Uh, sugar free, right? Uh, apparently, that's what they tell me. It says uh, zero buy. sugars on here. Yeah, that, well, that means it contains something else that'll give you cancer. Yeah, so be no, careful. That looks like a can full of sugar. No, it's like a warhead. Yeah, sour green apple warhead flavor. Oh, that's badass. It's, oh, it is. It's tasty. It's real tasty. Uh, no artificial colors either. You actually ripped on this one a couple weeks ago. You're like, man, did, that thing's got to be. I said, you're going to piss like Shrek. You yeah. have to. And like, then I dumped some out, and he was bamboozled to see that it was, oh, in fact, clear. It's it's probably <laughs> Don't really. Don't get Come and look at this. It's probably That's really, right. truly inside of there. And, like, it's, it's a very good chance that it's a. Uh... Listen, I'm, I'm still playing hurt, all right? Because uh, we had, was it Friday was Fan Madness? Oh, it oh still yeah. Is, it is still it's Fan still Madness. It still is. How did, how did that go? It was fantastic. Great, great, uh, great time over there at uh, A and A up north and uh, uh, north of the border. Yeah, it's always a chill time at A and A, especially yep. if you win. You, know, uh, you hit, then you're 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 having a great time. We did all right on the blackjack table. Didn't do. We were doing real good, and then we got greedy. Yeah, and then, I lost. We, got, and then we got greedy. Uh, we took our first little halftime break. We were at a table. What uh, me and some of the the bosses there for a bit. And we were we were doing good, and then we took that halftime break, uh, went back to the table, got some food, got some more drinks, and then we went back to the blackjack table to try and uh, win some more. And it you, did not. Uh, you got some food, you got some drink, you felt better about. It. It's like you know what? We got our orange slices in us. Yeah, let's go, <laughs> let's go. You know, let's let's go ahead and get back over there and test our luck. And apparently, they had us in the first half. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I love it, man. I, but- I, I would not recommend those showing up uh, near the end and taking Joe Fisher's seat after he gets up because then, yeah, easiest way to drop $150 in like 30 minutes or yeah, so. If I'm hitting, I'm not moving. This is my seat now. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I'm going to pay somebody uh, a couple bucks to hold it while I use the restroom. Hey, man, there's 20. You want to just sit here for me for a second as I go use the restroom? We were, we were doing good. Uh, give some prop to uh, Kurt Ludwig and his lucky bean. Really? Oh yeah, the lucky bean man. The lucky bean. He honestly, this was probably a OSHA health violation. He had like a bloody mary at one point. Right. Nice. And he took the because it came with like a green bean in it or something like that, like a celery stick and a green bean. And he took the green bean out, and then he just like hung on to it, and it just stayed at the table. And then it just became it took on the moniker of being the lucky bean. And he just was waving his bean around at people. <laughs> Try to stick his bean in my ear a couple times. It was uh, it was not good. And again, then uh, one of uh, the people that were in our group, he he put the bean in his mouth. Oh, that's yes, that's weird. Wow. Yeah. Well, we don't believe in COVID anymore. No, not at all. Not at all. I could yeah, tell. That's gone apparently. This dealer that bro we put had. the bean in my mouth. <laughs> Do it. The dealer wow. that we had, she was, uh, I don't think she was a fan of ours at all. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> was did... it the same one when I showed up? Yeah. The, uh, um... She was, she seemed annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. These guys if... are putting beans in each other's mouth and stuff. Like, what the hell? Yeah, f- waving their bean around. But um... Hey, that's the whole idea. You have fun. Well, number you, one. beans, you wave you know, it around. Lud, uh, the, the fact that Kurt went ahead and got the uh, Bloody Mary. I'm a big Bloody Mary guy. Like, don't have them all the time, but if... There's someone that has a special Bloody Mary, or they that's what they specialize in is Bloody Marys. I'm gonna partake for sure. Yeah, I I just uh I just had no, nothing but beers. I'll bring the beers. I'll, I'll bring, bring the, the beers. beers. <laughs> I, I had beers just the entire time. And then yesterday, uh I wasn't like hung over. It was just like sluggish. Oh, beers are I don't I don't really I drink just, beer I felt anymore. like I ran a marathon the day before. I felt like I ran a five two seven forty the day before. I, I... <laughs> I'll that. be real, man. I I don't really drink beer anymore. Like it was 
you know, as I got older, it that feeling you were just kind of describing that I not just hung over, but just, just like uh, just lazy just... almost. Like yeah, yeah, I didn't like that feeling, and it was work. making me super fat as I was getting older. So I was like, and I love beer. Beer is living in Oregon, living in Portland. So uh, last week I was in Bend, missed my guys, didn't get a chance to to do the show. How was the weather? The weather was amazing. Yeah, it was, like, it was, it was, nice it was a up beautiful here. day. It was and, nice up here. Yeah, I got a chance to go to this um this place called the Oregon Youth Challenge Program, OICP, and it's where a lot of students go to be able to kind of earn some credit for high school and stuff like that. So they kind of become cadets in this almost like military boot camp style uh, style school. And so I'm mentoring a young man up there and went to go see him. And he's only been up there a few months, but it's amazing what push-ups can do for for people <laughs> were like you, seriously like were you going maury popovich on these kids boot no, camp status no that all being you what, think you're tough what was my guy's name what was the, what was the big uh i think his name, i think his name was pause big d i think that was his name i can't really <laughs> they remember. got the boot camp guy but yeah but he would come out on maury he usually have like a either a uniform or or a uh sleeveless or excuse me a v-neck uh like sweater and, and he'd be all no, jacked up no shirt underneath it very very strong looking yeah, man no shirt underneath it and uh, he would come out and kind of set those kids straight. That's not what I had to do. I uh, just really went out there to be a mentor. But after that, um, just looking for a place to hang out. Every They have so many breweries. Very few, not very few, but not a lot of, like, cool bars. No offense to, to, to Ben. You just breweries. Awesome. But it was a bunch of breweries and stuff like that that I was like, you know what? I don't really, I'm not really drinking beer right now. I'm sure so. you, there are some good bars. You just gotta. So I went you, to a couple. You, you so, gotta look, so look how about a little this? harder. So night one, I end up going to like M and J's, R and J's. I can't remember the name of it. Tavern, and went in there, and it was a tavern. You know, there were people there. I I had a half of a of a beer and was like, I think it's time to go. I might have been there for 11 minutes. Now I'm in Bend, Oregon. So I can almost paint a picture for most of you as the lone black dude. Yeah, I was going to say, you, it's 99% Let's white. go ahead. Yeah. Was so, it M&J? M&J's. That's where I went the first time. Shout M&J's out to M&J's. Tavern. Waitresses well, were really nice, you know, kind of helped out and everything. But for the most part, you look at the pictures right now, Joe, it was like, okay, this is a cool bar, but probably not for me right now. And so I go to, like, my concierge or the front desk person. It's like, man, what's there to do here? Like, where's... It's at this point it's Saturday. You're not from around here, are you, buddy? Actually, it well, was there's it was, a great selection it two, of breweries. It was, it was two native ladies that that helped me out. They were super super chill, and one of them was like, "Oh, there's a place called Astro Bar or Astro something." It's like, but people get in fights there all the time. Police be there, and I'm like, Astro Bar that sounds like it might be kind of fun <laughs> to you know sign me up if nothing else, man. So I go to this first first bar. It's it's okay, you know, but then go to Astro. It's like. This is better. However, everybody there was like 24. Okay. I found Astro Lounge. Looking at that now. Yeah. It's a college bar. Yeah. I was like, okay. I, I, I might have stayed for what college. 11 minutes. <laughs> there co- the, the, there's a lot of rich in people in Bend that have college aged kids. That OIT. Are probably going to hang, <laughs> hang out at that place. No, OIT. I mean, it was Bend a lot of young Community people. Community College. No owls. Yeah, it was a lot a lot of young people, and either way, it probably wasn't my scene, my 40-year-old scene. No, there's a large blue drink with multiple straws coming out of it. That yeah. does not scream Rashad Taylor. It does not scream really? Rashad Taylor. What? So. You, you, all and I, you all and I can't, can't go do one of those together? <laughs> Let's go. Do Let's we have do to do drink out of the drink. same? Look yes. <laughs> are we all drinking out of the same cup? Damn right we yeah, are. No, we're we're doing a big not. old punch drink with this, yeah, same, same bowl, but straws you know, into it. You yeah. know, prior to COVID, it's amazing how reckless we were living. You know, like like, uh, like on a sanitary like, scale. Yeah, like let's let's go ahead and all drink out of this. Put our straw and drink out of the same Dude, big ass blue. I do that now. Beans with were y'all. in ears and mouths all the time back then. Yeah, I I guess I I guess they were. But I mean, I'm I'm glad we are where we are now. You know. But why? Someone tell me why, damn it. Um, admittedly, I'm dragging a little bit of ass too today. Um, you weren't here, Rashad. I discovered uh the champagne of beers last weekend. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Not the high life. The high life. Miller Not Genuine Draft life. is is now no, my no, no, choice. No. That's Miller High Life and the Genuine Draft. Those are two different things. You're They're living high. the high life, though, if you drink Miller Genuine Draft. That's the whole phrase. Like, it, I think there is a thing called like Miller, Miller High Life. Miller High like, Life. Yeah, that's there's the... like sixty four. No, I drink yeah. Miller Genuine Draft. The champagne. Oh, I of love beers. MGD. And it is it, it is nectar oh my to gosh. my lips. M- I I had another seven yesterday after no. like nine last week. Listen, no. it's it's really hard to find too. Like they, I only find yeah, Miller probably like for a good reason. Meyer. Hey man, listen, MGD. 
is goaded for me as a beer. Like, it's always been... High Life is one of those other ones. Like, I can't quite afford MGD, but High Life is going to be good. Everybody's hey, going to enjoy it. yesterday at Freddy's, one. 12 bucks, Rashad. No, it, yeah. was, it was in the affordable... It was Absolutely. less than Rolling Rock. I'm I was shocked. impressed. I'm shocked that they were uh, giving away MGD for $12 a 12-pack. Hey, man. <laughs> MGD a is... A dollar a beer. So, you, so, wait, you're not an MGD fan? No. You're tripping, bro. No. You're tripping. When I first really, as a kid, when you're trying to get booze and stuff like that, man, MGD yeah. came in the clutch. And then as I got older, I'm walking, I might have been Again, like, you are like, what, 40? Like, I am. I mean, come on. Yeah. Have some respect for yourself. What do you mean? I do respect myself, which is why I love MGD. See, that's that, that's that uppity, I'm, I'm, I'm playing golf every weekend stuff. I'm I was going to say, it is, it is claw season. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like this guy, there exactly. He's, he's about to be on his claws here, here in a minute, man. He's uh, an, under, he's an appreciated am. good uh, MGD. I got a few claws I in the fridge it. at I home waiting for me. I knew that wasn't no damn uh, ghost. I knew it was a claw. There's something in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, those IPAs, they, they don't need to mess up our stomachs. We can all go lighter. I see IPA it. tastes like it. earwax. Well, I love it. It just I can't do two in like uh, before feeling like I'm like already full for the you, day. You know when I get so. an IPA is when I'm not really feeling like drinking. Not 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 not, not drinking a lot. Like I know this one IPA. You just want a couple. Will probably get me feeling okay. Like I can have maybe a shot of something in an IPA. I'm like okay, I'm feeling pretty good right now because this IPA is you know thick as a snicker. Yeah. Uh, whew, careful there. <laughs> I almost hit the dumb button just out of instinct. That was I hilarious. I heard the S. I heard oh, the S. Come on, man. Uh, Vancouver Ford text line chime in. MGD is not the champagne of beers. Miller High Life High is Life the is, champagne yeah. of beers. High Life definitely is the champagne of beers. But, saying, you need, but, you're going with the black labeled bottle. You need to go with the clear gold. That's what I buy. Which one? The the clear gold. Well, yeah, then you're drinking the high, the high life, not in genuine draft. But it, okay. I'm telling you, you need to look up the yeah, MGD. Yeah. MGD. This is, is why it's a different one. <laughs> this different. is why I'm ripping on it because MGD is no good. And you're gonna stop saying that, man, because that is untrue. MGD is it's amazing. Not. It's not. Uh, Vancouver Ford text sign 503-864-6326. Dollar goes further at Vancouver Ford. Treat you right before, during, and after the sale. Visit Vancouver Ford. Dot com and uh also the madness it was fantastic these last couple days up well, at Alan A. Oh okay yes I'm sure it was amazing. Well, it was great just in the context of the games too. Well I mean unless, you, unless you're talking locally but uh but yes if you're talking about the overall experience I'm sure it was absolutely amazing well, up there. Guess what? It's twice the madness, okay? Because George McCoy at Warren Allen turning the law and Coors Light presents fan madness Thursday from noon to 7 p.m. at X Golf to Walton this Thursday. Right. And then Friday from noon to 7 p.m. at X Golf Vancouver. So you can watch the tournament. I'll bring the beers. And you can uh, play some golf at X Golf. I'll be there on Thursday at Tualatin. I will not be making the trip Friday to Vancouver. It's a little bit too long uh, for my liking. But I will be there Thursday probably from noon to 7 the entire time. I confirmed that uh, there is a that we have our own bay uh, at oh, X Golf. Nice. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, well, you know, well, we should. I, as I we should. Right? Say, I, I don't know if I'm showing up if we don't have our own bay yeah. because that was the whole thing with the ten and the fan uh, winter golf classic. Someone was like, Joe, are you going to be showing up to that? And I'm like, well, all the bays are accounted for because there are people playing. So because I cannot play, I Probably will not, not be showing up to that. No. Probably not. Well. Vancouver and Tualatin stand up. You know, the fan is in your hood. You know, we on, we on, we on the side of your town. Pull up. Fan Madness, presented by George McCoy at Warren Allen. Attorneys of law, injuries, and missing work ruining your day. Call George McCoy at warrenallen.com. He'll make him pay. And by Coors Light, don't let your ba bracket break you. Coors Light, celebrate responsibly. I did celebrate responsibly on Friday, by the way. We had a party bus, all right? The girlfriend drove me home Friday night. She uh she took care of me. It was good times. Good times. Yeah, I'm glad you guys had fun. Yeah. It was uh a definite great time. It was a good time last night until it wasn't. We'll get to yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Uh there are there's one team who uh their bracket got busted thanks to a school where nobody knows where they actually are geographically. Uh there's a chance that we could have two more blue bloods go down, fingers crossed. Uh we need to talk about the Streisand effect. Do you know what the Streisand effect is, Rashad? I don't know. Jordan, don't do you know I what do. the Streisand effect is? 
Does it have to do with Barbra Streisand? It does. I, I don't know what it is. It, it, it does, okay. but we'll we'll have a little lesson today. We'll get to that later. Uh, we need to talk about this Shohei Otani story again because Jordan and I and uh, Patrick Harris are talking about it on Wednesday, and I want to talk about feeling bamboozled, hoodwinked. This this, this Ipe guy, he even got me. I was like, on Wednesday, I'm like, he went to UC Riverside. <laughs> Not so fast, my friend. This dude is on one right now with his uh, with his uh, bi- biography and the background that he's giving teams. And uh, who bites someone, honestly? We'll get to that in the second hour, too. But let's start first here locally. It was fun until it wasn't. We get to that next to your Sports Sunday. Joe Fisher, Rashad Taylor, Jordan Schultz behind the glass. 1080 The Fan. Why choose a Sleep Number Smart Bed? Can it keep me warm when I'm cold? Wait, no. I'm always hot. Sleep Number does that. The Climate 360 Smart Bed actively cools or warms up to 13 degrees on either side for your ideal sleep temperature. 94% of Sleep Number Smart Sleepers report better sleep. J.D. Power ranks Sleep Number number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. And now save up to $1,000 when you purchase select Sleep Number Smart Beds and an adjustable base. Ends Monday. For J.D. Power 20. ends another begins going through my emails right now the newberg vipers fifth grade soccer team here we go 
<laughs> Here we go again. Spring soccer. Bum, bum, Which they do in bum, some bum, states. Bum, like it's like bum, bum, instead of it being a fall sport, it's a spring sport. They in some just places. do both. Yeah. No, well, they do crazy. that here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they obviously like, have it no, in the for fall. their for their schools and stuff like that. Like Oh, I was just bitching to my mother yeah. yesterday that I played way too much soccer instead of baseball as a kid. Like, Mom, you put me in soccer when baseball was going on. Come on. Yeah, you know, I uh I've taken my son to do some BP, take some grounders out, um, you know, where where we used to live in Beaverton, but it's been a little while and he, you know, he was down for it for a bit, but the dude the dude loves his soccer. He loves his basketball. Those are his two go tos. I'm trying so hard that one day, maybe by the time he gets to high school, he makes golf his spring sport. But it's just I it's not looking well. Uh, it's not looking well at all. I got a, I got a few years to go, and we need a lot of excitement drum up before then because right now, anytime I get him out to the driving range swinging the club, he just one I want to swing the driver. And nothing else. Yep. Doesn't want to work on the wedges. Doesn't want to work on the irons. I want to hit dingers, Dad. Oh, dude. I just want to. And then. But that's the thing, too. It's like even when he swings the driver, it's no no passion. It's the big stick, dude. You got to have some fire in that thing. And it's just he is just going through the motions. And it's like, all right, just step off. Let me let me get my swings in here. But so my little dude loves to go into the driving range for, you know, for whatever reason, like he'll 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 bitch and moan about like, hey, man, need you to go out there and get some dribbles. We have like the dribble up ball. So it's like a, up so ball. it's like this yellow basketball that has like a little QR code on it, and it has all these um, uh, dribbling workouts that kids. Uh, can I think do you've to told really, me about this yeah. before. Yeah. So when I tell them to do that, it's like, oh, do I have to do that right now? Like, yes, bro. You know. But if it's like, or hey man, let's go out there and shoot. It's like, man, bro, I don't want to do that right now. But get like, your ass out there. But if I'm like, man, hey man, let's let's go ahead and get to the driving range. It's like, okay, can I can I get my own bucket? It's like, I mean. Dude, hell yeah. No, like we'll be here forever <laughs> if that's the case, you know? That's why, like, the buck isn't that expensive, but bro, like, we're not there yet, but he loves it for whatever reason. Hey, listen, uh, also, uh, I was there once too, as far as just getting going. I was next to a guy at the driving range yesterday, though, that I thought that he was going to shank one, like, right into my spine. And because he was in the bay right behind me. And, you know, there's times I'm looking out, seeing where my target is. And then I see a ball, like, pass me, like, two, three feet in front of me going dead right. And I'm just like, oh, my God, today's the day I die. Today's the day that I get absolutely crushed by a golf ball in the range. Uh, Luckily, (laughs) we made it out of there alive. But I was scared S-less for a while. Um, Man, I'm talking about being scared last night. That Ducks game, that had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. I think up until that second overtime, no team had bigger than like a six point lead the entire game. Like Creighton and Oregon, neither team went up more than six points for all of the first half, second half, the first overtime. Like it was just a back and forth affair, trading blows. And before we get going on the Ducks, I just want to say Creighton, so annoying to watch them. They th- they threw up 39 three-pointers. They clanked off like 50 of them it seems like. How that math works out, I don't know. Don't don't do the math on it. But they missed so many three-pointers and just kept jacking them up that Oregon kept themselves in that game. And the reason they were able to keep themselves in the game is for two dudes. Jermaine Cousinard and Nafali Dante. With how this season progressed for the Ducks, the injuries and the up and down play and if they were even going to make the tournament, for the run that they just had, and last night those guys, not just those guys, the entire team were were absolutely gassed. Huffing and puffing, like at one point, I remember they came across the half court, Nafali Dante with hands on his knees, like looking down at the ground while the game was going, and it's like, dude, there, there is... A play happening right now. Dana's trying to set something up, and he was just <laughs> like Suck dying air, out man. there. Suck like air. when you play forty eight minutes, you know, like that. Yeah, uh, yeah forty eight minutes. You're, you're you're gonna be you know huffing and puffing out there, and forty eight minutes, and was for those forty eight minutes a man amongst boys. You know, for he the most part, again. as far as what he was able to do on the floor. So I totally understand why he was completely gassed. And Cousinard, again, like, putting the team on his back offensively. The Ducks, I believe, had seven three-pointers made in that game. He made six of them. Yeah. 
So, I mean, that that's kind of – you wonder, it's like, if they're able to get – someone to score 15 points on top of what they did. Are they able to pull this one out? But it really came down to that second overtime as far as scoring goes, and the three started to fall in for Creighton. Even their big dude nailed a three, and that was the backbreaker. I forget his name, but he, he was their center, you know, seven-footer. Kalkbrenner, I think it was. Yeah, or like yeah, that. Kalkbrenner, yeah. And then he nails that three-pointer, and that was one. That was one of the more deflating ones where you're like, oh, okay. And Gas just ran, ran out on the Ducks, but – those two dudes especially, but this team, man, got to be proud of yourself for the way that you showed up and almost beat this really, really good Creighton team. And they come up short. The season ends. Uh, Pac-12, though, they've been representing really well in the tournament so far. But the Ducks, they were just right there, right there. And you wonder if also, towards the end of, I believe, regulation, if they're able to get that ball inbounded to someone else besides Nafale Dante, to hit those two free throws, you wonder if they come out of this one on top and go to the Sweet 16. But, well, let's, I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff to wonder. Like, uh, you look at somebody like Jackson Shellstaff from right here in, in Portland. Like, if he has a better game than what he has, he, he doesn't go one for, what, one for seven? If he doesn't go out at the end of that game with that ankle injury. Yeah, and, you know. Yeah, it's there's, tough. There's, I mean, but if, you know, if he's able to kind of get at least a few of those shots to fall – you know, maybe you have a chance to kind of gain some momentum and keep going. Like, but you, you're right. And Folly Dante, you did you did all you can. Like, I mean, do you remember? And it's not the same, but it wasn't a tournament. But the game that Greg Oden played against um, Florida, you know, in the national championship. It's like, granted, Ohio State lost that game, but everybody was clearly saying like Greg Oden was the best person on the floor. Like, what he, he was shooting. Left-handed free throws, blocking shots, everything. That was Nafali Dante yesterday. Like when you put up, tw- what twenty-eight and uh, and twenty and twenty. You know, should have been twenty-two. They had two rebounds where they was same team rebound that went out of bounds. But you know, regardless, when, yeah. When when you when you're able to get seven offensive rebounds, you know, and be able to keep plays alive and and things like that. Like that's a those those are things are huge. And like I don't know. Now you start kind of wondering. You know, clearly, I mean, with with Dante being a senior, does he have an, an NBA career? Probably not. I mean, know. he, he I, was, I was wondering after the game the other day against uh, South Carolina, like he, he was great in the uh, Pac-12 tournament, but then seeing what he was doing against South Carolina, I was like, Am I crazy or is uh, Dante making himself some money right now? He, I mean, because he the way the way he's been playing is just on both sides of the court. Like, there's got to be some scouts out there that are licking their chops at just being able to be a rotational guy in the NBA with the way that he was playing and his size, his strength. Uh, clearly got to get the conditioning up, but I think that's also just from him being a little injured and not playing as much this year um, that will come in time. But I I would love for him to come back one more year. I, I pray he does. I think there's a weird stigma about upperclassmen in college to where it's like, well, why didn't you go to the league when you were a sophomore or a freshman? Because you weren't good enough at that point. And so there are a lot of freshmen and sophomores that people would probably take before Nafali Dante. But when you have a kid who can, you know, for the season is averaging, you know, 17 and 9, it can show, shows you that he can go off for big numbers, you know, against smaller teams. I mean, the league might be have some, even in the second round now, you can be something in the league. Well, well he I- can step out and shoot it a little bit too. So I would say like late second round. And let me chime in here really quick. I know we're kind of running out of time okay. with this segment, but. Uh, the Ducks game yesterday was it was really fun to watch, but extremely frustrating to me. I'm not trying to like bitch and say like I'm mad at the Ducks, but it was just frustrating for a couple of different reasons. Watching the game go along, the offensive rebounding or lack thereof was extremely terrible, and you could tell Dana Altman was pissed about that. And I've got to say, hey, props to Altman for being. Remember what I said last week? I need to see some fire from Dana Altman, and I had to go eat crow about Dana Altman actually being a good coach. And you know what? I'm Team Altman. Seeing that dude basically, if you all need coaching memes, he he is the coaching meme after all of those reactions last night just flipping out on the sidelines when his guys weren't getting rebounds, when his guys weren't going up the court enough. He was trying to coach the hell out of his guys, but how can you coach two guys that are literally shooting everything and then leaving. I think it was like 0-4-12 at one point were the rest of the team um, throughout the second half, and Cousinard and Infali Dante were just leading the charge. So that's not Dana Altman's fault, and frankly, I don't think it's 
Dante's or Cousinard's fault either. So extremely frustrating in that regard, but really good to see the effort from the Ducks that were healthy. And you're right, Rashad, if they had Shellstad make like another shot or two, I don't think they would have gone to overtime. If they'd even had Rigsby come in and shoot once, mm -hmm. I don't think he shot like before the first overtime. Yeah, they, kind of it, like Joe was saying, like it was they, a six point, no more than the six point lead for most of that game. So yeah. again, a couple of those those shots go in for Jackson Shellstad, then maybe we're have we're having a different conversation at this point. Yeah, a little frustrating, but still a, a definite. It's positive to see the Ducks doing this with limited resources. Right. They basically had nothing other than their two star players last and year. without you know Mookie Cook played what f three games for the Ducks, two games you know this year for them, and then was was on the bench. You're talking about a kid who was touted as one of the top recruits, you know, in college basketball this past year. He played LeBron James in a movie. Like, you know, so you can imagine what the Ducks could have been if they at least have one more guy on the floor. And uh, I do have to correct myself because as soon as I said it, I was like, wait, wait a second, because you did say that he was a senior. Dante, no eligibility left. I thought maybe with that, like, COVID season that he would maybe have one year. But Nafali Dante, he is done. Um, so we look to next year. As the Oregon Ducks are now in the Big Ten mm, in basketball, um, but man, yeah, that would have been it. Would have been fun to see them just one more game because I think that uh, they would have then taken on a uh, Tennessee, who had a close game against Texas yesterday. Uh, so it'll be now Creighton taking on Tennessee in the Sweet Sixteen. But let's talk more about the madness. One blue blood goes down. Start to question what the. What's going on with their head coach? And then we have the chance for two more Blue Bloods to go down today. Fingers crossed, everybody. We get to that next here, Sports Sunday. But first, Schultz, Sports Center update. Now, now, from the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. First on the fan, the Oregon Ducks gave it their all last night against Creighton, but just ran out of energy in double overtime to take the loss. 86-73 to the final. Jermaine Cousinard and Folly Dante combined for 60 points, but unfortunately the Ducks just didn't get much from anyone else on the roster. The Blue Jays move on to the Sweet 16 to face Tennessee. On the women's side of things, the Oregon State Beavers facing off against Nebraska in the round of 32. They're a seven and a half point favorite for that one today. Tip off set for 1 p.m. on ESPN. In the association, the Portland Trailblazers became only the second team in the last 50 years to start an all rookie lineup and actually managed a pretty good effort against the Denver Nuggets. Uh, lost by three, though, 114 to 111 the final. They're off today before heading to Houston to face the Rockets tomorrow. And the final round of the Valspar Championship. Going to be going on for the at least leaders here very soon. It's already started, but Keith Mitchell at 10 under so far, your overall leader getting going in about an hour and a half. And three tied for second, Mackenzie Hughes, Peter Malnati, and Seamus Power are all at eight under. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. I'm Schultze at the 1080 The Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand on the Odyssey app. The Fan's desktop player. Tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. Four, please. Golf in the Northwest with Jason Swigard is back. Saturdays at 8 a.m. before the Sinner and the Saint on Portland Sports Leader. 1080 The Fan. Now's the time to get a great deal on select Kubota compact tractors. The Kubota L-Series is the number one selling compact tractor in the U.S. They're designed for easy operation and feature performance mesh detachments. Right now at participating dealers, get a Kubota compact tractor for zero down, zero percent APR.
All right. Caitlin Clark giving us uh, something to talk about. We'll get to this in a little bit. But uh, Rashad, can you tell me where Oakland University is? Uh, Oakland, Oregon? <laughs> no, that'd be cool. No, uh, it's definitely not Oakland, California. It is not I, Oakland, as California. Found, as I found out, I, I was for certain <laughs> it was Oakland, California. This kid at the driving range yesterday, he was having a rough day. Not the one that almost killed me, this other kid. Uh, he said that one of his brackets, he took Duquesne. Oh, old like, Duquesne, huh? I was like, to, just to win their what? No, it sounded like he took Duquesne to win it all in one of his brackets. Wow. Uh, but then as we're watching the Oakland NC State game, it's on the TV at the driving range. He's repping Oakland because he was born in Oakland. And I was like, I don't think this kid knows that this Oakland University is not Oakland, California. <laughs> what do you research, kid? I was like, this poor guy. This kid's not really from Oakland then, because if you are from Oakland, you, <laughs> you know, know exactly. that it's not a school in Oakland. Not Oakland. Do yeah. your research, like, kid. I mean, you're clearly not from there. You're just making some stuff up. Come, Come on, on, bud. Come on now. He's like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I was born in Oakland. Yeah, so uh, I'm rooting for him. So do it, Jordan. Do you know where Oakland is? Is it like Oakland, Kansas? It's Oakland somewhere, bum f, middle of the country, United States. Well, that would be my guess. So I'm gonna throw Kansas out there. Well, I thought it was uh, a Pittsburgh school because there is an Oakland uh, area of Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, I think it's like a neighborhood uh, or, or something. I mean, that's why they call uh, uh, Pittsburgh Panthers. Their student section is the Oakland Zoo. <laughs> Isn't that where Duquesne is, actually? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Duquesne is also. That yeah. is their in-city rival. The Pit Panthers' in-city rival. Duquesne. The, the <laughs> That's Mike McCarthy, by the way. Duquesne. <laughs> yes. Have that on record. Um, so, Oakland University is in the great state of Michigan, actually. Oakland, Mich is Oakland a city in Michigan? Uh, no, it's uh, Oakland County, Michigan. Oh, good God! It's in Ro Rochester, Michigan, is where they're from. Maybe that's where the the guy at the, you know, at the at the bay was talking about to you. Oh yeah, that's maybe maybe he was from there. Maybe he's from Oakland Oklahoma. County, Michigan. I'm yeah. repping my Oakland County. <laughs> yeah. Um, it says though. Now I need to corroborate this, and the reason we're talking about them is because they beat Kentucky, and this is. What is it? The second time in three years that Kentucky has lost to a lower seed. I think it was St. Peter's a couple uh, years ago was uh, who they lost to. And now they're losing to Oakland. I'm sure that they uh, both invest in the same amount in their uh, sports programs. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very sure about that. Um, how about this? Oakland University, one of their famous alumni, David Hasselhoff. The Hoff? The Hoff went to Oakland University. Did he graduate from there? Or was it just like a six month stint? Well, he has a fifty seven percent chance of graduating from there because that is their graduation rate, fifty seven percent. I don't know if that's good. I can imagine the Hoff went super super tough. I can at... imagine he didn't need to graduate. I mean, when you have that <laughs> that head of hair and that chest hair, like no, you don't. Yeah, those guys don't care stay about in college. Yeah, they they care about their studies, don't they, Rashad? Yeah. What do you mean? You don't stay at school. Look like slides out there. And make something of yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking at the uh, famous alumni. And the Hoff and, became a pop star, so there you uh, go. I don't know. You do also have the designer of the Chevy Volt. He also went to school there. Maximiliano Larroquette. La Maximiliano. I think Maximiliano. We can, yeah. I think we can keep that invention. Like, you know, you can you can he can hang on to the Volt. But <laughs> I'm just saying, there's certain inventions I'm like, all right, man. I think sh uh, uh, Swag drives a Chevy Volt now. Does he? Uh, a Hyundai, okay. um, whatever their electric car is. Dude, he rolled up to me on the on that the other day, and I was shocked. He caught me off guard on that one. Because he pulled up it's all over! quiet. <laughs> pulled up all quiet. Yeah, yeah. I all don't right. like that. Uh, who Good else? Good old electric car. Here's the situation. <laughs> I drive a Hyundai Buzz, or whatever the hell they're called. Uh, Kendrick Nunn. Didn't know that he went to Oakland. Kendrick Nunn. Well, good for them. It was like a 10-year NBA vet there. So Oakland, they got the dub. Uh, and then they lost to NC State promptly. Uh, thanks to my guy, R.J. Burns, the big hoss out there, pushing three hundo. You see this kid? I did. Dude. What, I did. My, I love it. Like, my favorite player. I Again, we talked about this last week. And there's a girl for Iowa State <clears throat> who went for 40 the other day. Dude, big Bertha just oh, yeah. balling out there. There's no way. But the touch that she has when she when she shoots the ball like that touch is like, yo, did, that's going in every time. There's nothing no, you can do about her. No way she has a vertical more than a foot. 
and it doesn't matter. Like she just backs. You, you cannot get around this girl. And she came. She uh, she led Iowa State back from twenty down, dropping a forty piece with like no jumpers at all the entire time, just ripping down offense. Or well, I shouldn't say ripping down. Yeah, she kind of just me. they kind of just fell into her lap. Get but off uh, me. so we have the one blue blood Kentucky going down. Now we have to depend on James Madison taking down Duke today in Grand Canyon. The fight in Lopes. Go Lopes, baby. Taking down Alabama. Now, Alabama is not necessarily like a blue blood in basketball, but it is Alabama. So I feel like we have to be designated to root against them. And they're a top five seed, you know, in their, uh, over in their, their region. So, yeah. I mean, uh, Grand Canyon, which i going to be honest, didn't know Grand Canyon had a school. Uh, can you guess where Grand Canyon is? Is it near the Grand Canyon? <laughs> it is uh, actually. It's in the middle. It's in Phoenix. So, I mean, it's pretty pretty close a couple hours away but grand hold canyon is i think about two three hours north of phoenix hold on like this is the grand canyon university that we see in like the almost for profit for college looking kind of commercials right 47 percent graduation yeah rate. that it, it's like apollo yeah. freaking college or, I, or allegedly i, I want to say whoa, it, whoa 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 i spent some time at apollo college <laughs> at, yeah. at, for, for a little bit that's a real thing yeah I did. Oh, no i'm not saying it isn't a no, real no, thing what are you saying what are you I, saying why did you no, leave no, rashad <laughs> why did you? i finished i finished the program yeah just there is literally a section in their wikipedia page that uh comments on their for-profit restructuring uh-huh that's okay there you go. They, uh, how far your mind can take you, man. Like at with <laughs> with Grand Canyon College, yeah, Grand Canyon University. Uh, I also hear There's that a reason they don't exist anymore. What is it they're just saying? Uh, <laughs> they've been called a diploma mill as well. They're uh -huh. just trying to get people in. Get, I mean, forty seven percent graduation. That's rate. very it's, bad. Uh, that's not. That's very. I feel bad. like that is not good. That like, is like that's <laughs> some stuff that would get your high school shut down. If, yeah, if you only had a forty seven percent graduation. That rate. is like the state high school graduation rate here in Oregon. Maybe slightly lower, but right we're not after, good. Right after their for-profit restructuring section on Wikipedia, the next one is attempts to return to nonprofit status. And then, uh, oh, and then there's another section, regulatory sanctions. Can, yeah, that's just going great at Grand Canyon. That's like if Hugh Hefner started to run a church before he died. That that will never work. Put he his money to good use before he passes away? Not, love it. You'll always be associated with the Playboy bra and all the CD stuff associated with that. It, it's never, you will never shake that Grand Canyon University name from those commercials. I love how the first thing I think of was those commercials. Go Lopes, baby. Go Lopes. Hey, I will say, though, Congrats. that um, we do have some sort of rooting interest in uh, the Lopes is because, um, yeah, I'll tell you why. We have a former Oregon Duck on the team that transferred there. Locke Wurr. Locke Wurr is on that. I don't know what he did for this team this year. I can't uh, listen. Wasn't watching a lot of Grand Canyon basketball this year. Uh, he did average 5.8 points for them. So, again. Killer season. Go Lopes, baby. Uh, so, <clears throat> dude, Kentucky, though, I mean, just to go back on them. Uh, Calipari, he, I mean, what are we doing, bud? The, the, he has to kind of be going into next season, like, I don't know, and do something, like, of note. Like, you keep getting top recruits, top recruiting classes, and what have you done, not just the last three seasons, I mean, hell, I need to go by their year by year. Like, when's the last time they made a Final Four? Like, this is Kentucky we're talking about. It's been at least a decade, right? Dude. They won a championship within two or three years of him getting there. Possibly two, if I'm correct. But yeah, he that was like Anthony 15... Edwards, or excuse me, Anthony, Anthony Davis. That was like 15, and, 20 years ago. Uh, um, who else was on that that amazing Kentucky squad that ended up winning, you know, the At least four other NBA you know? players, like in that three-year stretch. Yeah, but, I mean, and that's the thing. I think Kentucky, it's more so the name, you know, uh, the, the college name, you know, the 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 blue blood 2012. status. 2012 is when they won yeah, that championship. So the, it's the blue blood status that comes with Kentucky because, you're right, they haven't won a national championship or even competed in, like, the, the Elite Eight for a little bit, right? Uh, the last Final Four that they were in, the national semifinal, was in 2014-2015. Uh, okay, so you're talking 20, I mean, ten, uh, excuse me, 10 years ago, you know, just about that that happened. Yeah. But still, 10th pick, uh, tip pick of, of last year's draft, uh, and Wallace. You know, the in the second round, Chris Livingston. The year before that, Shane Sharp, you know, 
uh, um, Ty Ty Washington. You know, so you're going to get guys that are going to go in the first round from Kentucky every single year, regardless of how bad that they end up, you know, that they end up doing in the tournament. And you're going to get at least one of those players going in the lottery in most cases. Uh, from the Vancouver Ford text line, Grand Canyon coached by Bryce Drew, which I did know that. Thank you for the reminder. Brother of Scott Drew. Uh, Bryce Drew is the one who hit uh, the game-winning shot for Valparaiso, or however the hell you say that school's name. I just call him Valpo, uh, against Ole Miss in 1998. I do remember that old clip as well. And um, someone's saying that Lock were now he's getting his IT degree in under 14 weeks, plus a free Chromebro- Chromebook. Ooh. Good for you. Man, getting money over there. I love it. Give me that Chromebook. Uh, Grand Canyon University, notable alumni. Henry Cejudo, MMA fighter. Cejuts. There you go. I mean, not quite the Hoff, but, you know, well, they'll take it. Not quite the Hoff. Tim Salmon. Oh, Slamming Salmon. Dude, let's go. That's a World Series winner right there. Uh, Kevin Warren, current uh, president and CEO of Chicago Bears. If they were smart, so, it's a, who's who? It, no, if they were smart, they would put Tin Salmon all over that freaking university, <laughs> just everywhere. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that Oakland gets the win with this one. Oh, I, I guess we got to look at James Madison now. We'll do that during the break. We'll see who the notable alumni for James Madison um, University is, because they, I mean, if anything, you know, Grand Canyon. Eh, yeah, we're rooting him for today, but I want to see James Madison get the dub, especially over Duke. Isn't the James Madison mascot the Dukes? I Ooh, think they're the they? James Madison Dukes. That, that sounds correct. The so James we have the Madison Dukes. That's the, correct. The Dukes versus Duke today. All right. Go Lopes, go Dukes. All right. We're going to look up the notable alumni. Uh, but also, and whether we get to this in the next segment or not, um, the Streisand effect. A little uh, education on what that is. I got to know and why that matters right now in March Madness. We get to that next here, Sports Sunday, to any of the fan. Hey, it's Souk. And guys, for those of you with a full head of hair, congrats.
think Oakland University wins it with the Hoff. I mean, that's a yeah, uh, that's a pretty significant c- pop culture icon. Okay, I did see this. Uh, PFT comment uh, commenter from uh, Barstool Sports. He's one of their top uh, people over there at Barstool. He's got the uh, Pardon My Take podcast. He was actually. Um, he was at the game the other day. I was seeing clips of him going around. Just at, I, I forget who James Madison beat in the first round, and which you know I actually had them winning that first round game in my bracket that I hastily picked all my games within like five minutes. Boom, boom, boom. Oh yeah, it was like we had to have the office smart. We had to have the office pool brackets turned in by nine a.m. on Thursday. I got into the office at eight forty-five. And then just went. Blah, 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 blah. So I do have a question. Men's and women's. I do have questions for the both of you because I'm almost for certain, Jordan, you did a bracket. This I year. did do bracket. Yes. How many brackets do you have? Oh, just one of each. We had, uh, men's and women's. Yeah, I did the pool here, and then also at my former employer, uh, they still let me in their pool, so did, I did, did that pool as well. Did you pick the same teams? No. For both brackets, no. I honestly, I tried to do. You got to mix it up. Pretty similar, but you, you got to give yourself, give yourself a tiny bit of extra. Like I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't go like sixteens on one and like ones on the other, but I, I varied it. Hmm. PFT, uh, it was Wisconsin that James Madison beat the other day, but he was getting into it with Wisconsin fans. I, I, I don't mind that at all. Again, being the small school, talk your ass, talk your ass. All right. Oh. Yeah, you you got to do that, but you you got to make sure you're competing to start talking that s. And I mean, as far as you know, Wisconsin they did their job against Wisconsin, so you can talk as much as you want to. Um, might be a little di- bit different against Duke, but you nah. know, maybe maybe not. It's, this isn't the Coach K led R- Duke. Ro- roll Dukes. Yeah, this isn't the Coach K led you know Blue Devils. So roll Dukes, we'll roll Lopes. Come on, baby. I'm pretty sure in my uh, bracket I also have Grand Canyon winning this game too. Listen, it's a far. I I got a long way to go. All right, I I don't. I think that twenty bucks is long gone. Oh, Jim Acosta, CNN White House correspondent. Okay, well, that's oh god. It's probably he, he went to Grand. He went to James Madison. Went to James Madison. Yeah, not Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either one, honestly. Like zippity doo Like good uh, for you, buddy. Let's see. Yeah, it's. uh, I'm sorry, the Hoff. It's up and it's good. Looks like he's the winner. Oh, a few musicians though. Looks like James Madison is uh, known for their musicians. Butch Taylor of Dave Matthews Band. All right. Okay. 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 He was out on the quad singing for the ladies. Um. Yeah. No. I'm sorry, James Madison. You're not. You're not bringing the fire. You're not bringing the heat. No. Um. What what what, what I got here on my notes here? Oh yeah, Streisand effect. You, so you guys don't know what that is. I had to learn about this myself. Does it have anything to do with Funny Girl? Funny Girl. One is, of, that, is that a movie? You one of hers? Um. Well, it has to do with Barbara Streisand. Okay. Uh, apparently, the Streisand effect is when you bring attention to something that nobody really knew about, but because you yourself brought the attention on it, now everybody's going to know about it. Oh, like Hannibal Burris and Bill Cosby. Yeah, in a okay. sense, but it wasn't like what would have been wasn't creepy. Well, how that would have worked, it would have been like if Bill Cosby said something about it, and then everybody was like, "Well, I didn't know about this," and then they looked into it, and it was like, "Oh, wait, Bill Cosby, you're you're a disgusting human being." So Barbara Streisand, what what happened with her is she did it about some sort of uh, beach home that she had in L.A. in the early two thousands, and it like then raised awareness towards like beach erosion and like these fancy mansions that people had and how it was making it worse on the coastline or something like that. And then basically she, she complained about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, out of herself. Yeah. Why am I talking about this? Well, Kim Mulkey, LSU head coach, she went on like a four or five minute tirade yesterday during her press conference because apparently the Washington Post has been trying to reach out to her for the last two years because they're writing an article about her. Not only have they reached out to her, they've reached out to former players, former coaches, and associates of hers. And they then basically told her, like, hey, we're giving you, like, one last chance. We've been trying to talk to you for the last two years. You got until, like, Tuesday to get back to us for an interview. And if not, we're moving forward with our article. She was not happy about that. She felt like it was an unfair timeline 
that she said with us preparing for our game, they knew that we couldn't have the time to be able to respond to which this is, article. Which is fair-ish. They've been trying to reach out to her for two years writing this article. We've been great for two years. Like, I'm busy with Angel Reese. Because there's no off-season, right? Off-season. Yeah, no <laughs> so off-season. So right? I think after two years, you would probably expect, summer ball. Re- expect them to run the story at, at, like, peak impact time, which is when LSU is in C- the NCAA tournament. Duh. So Kim Mulkey. Come on, Kim. Now basically uh, one of the worst people uh, in sports. She's so pleasant, isn't she? I, uh, I have my own thoughts on Coach Mulkey, but continue. She's a winner. Nah, those aren't, I mean, those are it, but she some of them. She speaks her mind. Some of them, but no. You don't want to hang out with every yeah. winner out there. I didn't want to hang out with Bobby Knight. I don't nice. want to hang out with Kim freaking Mulkey either. Well, and you know, she just, uh, she came to the defense of a Brittany Griner so uh, well, too, when she was over there in Russia, right? You know, she was uh, definitely staunchly defending her. Oh, wait, no, she didn't actually say anything about that and kept telling reporters, don't ask her about it. So, you know, what did she do, though? Just won the national championship at Baylor. Uh, but now everybody is like, well, I didn't care about this Washington Post article, nor did I even know that it was going that this was kind of on the horizon. But Kim Mulkey, who has now apparently hired the best defamation lawyer in the country, and I will be suing the Washington Post if they file any false report or story about me, is uh, now basically everyone's like, well, hell. <laughs> I'm ready to read this Washington Post yeah, I article know what whenever it, says it comes now. out. Caught being an ass, Kim? I, yeah. I want to know, <laughs> know what it says now. Yeah. Uh, She's a good old girl. You know, like we yeah. talk about good old boys all the time like that, and you can listen in her delivery. I wish you did that to Angel Reese. Angel Reese would have got mopped up because Angel Reese isn't a fighter. She's a pretty girl that hoops. That's She's what holding she is. me back, girl. Yeah, get out of here. She's, you know, let me, like, that. That's not her. that's not her game. That's not her role. So, yeah, I'm not super surprised. Um... There's something she says the n word a lot. I can almost guarantee it. I'm oh! surprised she says she. I'm in. I'm telling you. I, mean, I love you, Richard. I guarantee she's man. She says it a, 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 a whole lot. I can almost guarantee you're she's like not around a Paula her team, Dean situation. When she's not around her team, when she's and I and I'm surprised she never let it slip. It come out. This is probably what the article's about. Like I mean, she let it slip one time. I can almost guarantee it in her life. I guarantee she's. Oh, oh sorry. I, I didn't mean. Maybe this is what the article's about. That's what I'm saying. She could be the Paula Dean of sports, allegedly. Dude, be careful. She might sue oh, your she ass. Makes a good no, that's though. allegedly. I could be mad at Paula Dean because, damn it, she can fry a good chicken. You know what I'm saying? Have you seen some of the some of the sides she makes? Those biscuits? Paula Dean. <laughs> she like, gets a we pass. For, we, I mean, I think a lot of us forgave Paula Dean for whatever. We was <laughs> mad at first. I'm not going like, front. what the hell is this? Oh, my God. We're not gonna, look... I'm not going to front. Like, we were, we were, it took a minute. Is that but, a peach cobbler? God, dang oh it. That, that cobbler looks so good. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to educate you on uh, uh, DeQuesney's head coach, Keith Dambrit, in the uh, commercial break. DeQuesney. He thought that he had the pass. In fact, he did have the pass. And I'll I'll educate you in the commercial break because, um, boy, bold move on his part. But hour number two coming up. We got got to get to the Shohei Otani stuff because his interpreter, um, I don't know if you saw this story, Rashad. Yes, I did. It, it, it just keeps getting better. Can't trust nobody, bro. <laughs> it keeps getting better. Who knows if he even speaks Japanese at, at this point? <laughs> you wonder with this guy's backstory, because uh, it's not holding up. It's not holding up. Uh, who bites a person, honestly? And uh, a lot more. So, hour number two, coming up. Sports Sunday, 1080 The Fan. Tony's best.
two sports Sunday. Joe Fisher, Rashad Taylor, Jordan Schultz behind the glass. Is that better? I was going to say. Like, Is that better, That's Rashad? improvement, man. That's improvement. I don't like this. Woo. Woo. Hey, guys. It's Joe, Joe and Fisher. Rashad here. Good morning. Look, man, no. I need energy. Like, everyone here at the fan, if you're an on-air host, you have your your opening line, your, your greeting. Right. Well, at least I'm here and not trying to uh, help the youth of tomorrow, Ooh, okay? Put that, put that hat back on, oh, though. Oh, yeah. It's a mess, Ooh. dude. Lot, yeah, lot don't happening. help the youth of tomorrow with that hair. I'm a, I'm a hairy mess right now. The, the up top on the face, yeah, it's... Um, I mean, a lineup on the face, and you're 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 the mix. You're all good. Grr. Again. I'm yeah. a bear. Yeah. Yeah, it needs to... Something needs to be done here. Um, So, all right. We might as well just talk about this, because I told Rashad during the commercial break, and I think we just need to alert the masses of uh, the uh, DeQuesney head coach, uh, Keith Dambrit, um, who was also the high school head coach for one LeBron James. So, I mean, pretty prolific career, right? Just got a win in the NCAA tournament as an 11 seed or 12 seed, whatever the hell they were, <clears throat> and uh, was the head coach for LeBron James in high school. But uh, – <laughs> Back in uh, 1992-93, basically when I was uh, like one, like maybe one and a half, he was coaching Central Michigan. That was at the Central Michigan Chippewas, I believe. Okay. And he was coaching the team. And they had a big matchup. Big matchup against Mo- uh, Miami of Ohio. All right. I don't know how big. I don't know what the records were. Let's just say it was a big matchup because he felt so inclined that he needed to ask his players, you guys, do you mind if I use the word? Do you mind if I hype up my team and my players by using the N-word? And Naysayer? <laughs> yes, naysayer, yeah. He asked if he could say uh, the Beyond naysayer the word and mo- motivating his team. Now, in the context, I don't know if it was like, Hey, let's go, uh, or let's go beat these. Uh, you know, it was, I don't know the context there, but he asked for permission from his team and they gave him the green light. And so, Coach Dambrit, he went ahead and he used the word and it did not to work out in his favor. I guess it worked out in favor of the school because they changed the uh, discriminatory language policy at the school, but. Coach Dambrit was fired uh, because he should be. He sued the university in a wrongful discrimination lawsuit, and all eleven black players on the team joined him in the suit. I mean, that's a that's a strong team right there. All right, fighting for each other there, um, claiming the university's policy against discriminatory language is too vague. He eventually lost the suit. Uh, not shocked, but the stu- <laughs> I love how this is wrote. The students prevailed in overturning the school's language policy. Well, good for congrats them. Congrats to the students. <laughs> Mazel. Like, I mean, like, I'm glad that they got that taken care of. Now, like, that's a redemption I'm, story, all right? Uh, yeah. Look at him so, now. I mean, I got to be honest. There's a, there's a lot wrong with this story, bro. Like, my coach comes to me in college. He's like, hey, man, just want to talk to all the black players. Like, I really need to motivate, motivate everybody. How would you feel about me using... The N word, and in, in our next speech, does, does that work? And bold move, Cotton. Yeah, like it, <laughs> see and, if it works out. Yeah, yeah. like so. I, I'm trying to figure out like why do you, why do you need to, some? I'll be real. There are a lot of people that just want to say it. Feel like it's a cool word. Feel like the way we say it sounds cool. Well, the again, way it's I, said in music. I want to know the context cool. because yeah. if he told them like, "No, I want to motivate you guys," versus like, "No, I want to rip on the Miami University and it's, players." And it's one thing, like, and that's that's the, that's the thing. Like, in any context, yeah. <laughs> why would you? Why do you need this? Like, why is this a thing that you feel like is important for you? So I need you naysayers to go out there and do this, and blah, blah, blah. or those naysayers out there are they're they're gunning for your throats. They're they're coming for your livelihood. Like, <laughs> why is this a why is this a part has to be a part of of the speech? Like, I feel like you can be just as motivated. If you've never seen Remember the Titans, how many times did Denzel call oh, his team man. naysayers? Never. You know, you don't have to. Like, there are a lot of coaches that, that don't have to. Now, Mike Tomlin, almost certain he does. 
talking to everybody for sure. Um, uh, maybe uh, I'm I'm trying to think of just the coach off the top of off top of my head. Um, Pete Carroll probably doesn't use a lot of naysayers in his, in his pregame. I'm gonna guess no, Bob. Yeah, I'm gonna guess just not not very many. <laughs> you know, so I feel like depending on Antonio Pierce, I feel like he's gonna have a lot of those. N bombs and some well, he, pregame speeches. Coach Dambrit sounds like he's invited to the cookout. That's for sure. I mean, if by they, his players, by the players that <laughs> yeah. are on the team, Rashad, I, I LeBron, I, I, LeBron forgives him. I feel like the, I've got an interesting question here for you, and I'm, I'm I, I, if you're in that position, if you're a player in that locker room, and, and he's t- he's asking you this, do you feel like you can't even say no in that situation? My first question <laughs> is why. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, my, that's the first question I Absolutely. think I have. Like, in that locker even, room. Yeah, even, I think I'm trying to get more minutes, Coach. Like, yeah, why, you can use it. Why? Like, I mean, yeah, that's the only reason. Like, I'm trying to play. I'm at the end of the bench. Um, you know, but why? Why uh, do you, why, why, what's yeah. it, what's it going to change? You well, know? Well, now my first, my next thought is like, all right, well, how was this 1992, 93 Central Michigan Chippewas team? Like, were they, were they making a run? Was this a season where it was like, dude, Coach Keith, he's got us on one right now. This guy can do no wrong. Uh, they, they, they finished the year eight and 18. Mm. <laughs> and that, that's the year that he asked that's for the this? year four and 14. In the MAC conference, okay. If he were like twenty eight, no, maybe, and uh, maybe you could understand, but I, I still probably not. But eight and eighteen, and I don't know God. what, what game against Miami, Ohio, it was that he decided to do this. But uh, listen, he's he's three and seven going into this game against the Miami the first time they lose. 5943. <laughs> I'm with Rashad. I think he just wanted to say it. Yeah, he just, just wanted to like I, I got to make a point. And, and then the next one, they're 5 and 13 going into this game and they lose 87 to 68 to Miami. So it clearly didn't work. Clearly did not motivate his team enough. Uh and I don't know if he was fired after that game or got to finish the season out. When but was the game that he decided to ask? Like That's what I'm saying is like was it this January 20th matchup? Uh, against them, against Miami, where they only scored 43 points and lost by 16? Or was it the time where, hey, you did a little bit better on offense, you scored 68, but you still lost by 19 to Miami, Ohio? Maybe he just he, there was something against that Miami team that just really stuck in his craw. I mean, they were on a skid at that point. They had lost four in a row. You're five and thirteen. You know, you're just trying to find something to you're motivate. Desperate. <laughs> it's it's crazy. You went to the N word out of desperation. Like we need something. I gotta come on, I gotta guys. Light a fire under these guys. Gotta like, connect with these guys somehow. You idiot. Yeah, I don't. I don't get that one. But good luck to you today. Kim Mulkey was like, "Hey, I, you know, you want to know what I as do? As a coach, you gotta, you gotta pull out anything." Okay, oh no, no, dude, Quesney's out. No luck to him. They're done. They get, they got ousted yesterday. Well, so it's unfortunate, it really is. You know what really <laughs> motivates my players? You know what I say to them? <laughs> oh my god! And Rashad, I don't think you've seen a picture of this guy if you if you didn't watch the Duquesne game yesterday. But uh, if if you see this dude. It fits the description of somebody that would absolutely ask to use that I mean, word. And that's My the, God, that's the more insulting part. Like you asked us, like if if it's is it cool if I do this just to make sure that I didn't want to do it without without your guys' approval. I, I have this. So you thought about this? You thought about you know what could I do? There, there's this article that I'm looking at from the year 2000. 11 of Dambrit's 14 players were black, and throughout his career, he had been steeped in street language. Maybe too Steeped. much, he says. <laughs> Steeped. Wow. Okay, this is starting to sound like a Maury Povich. Show. And again, I know we have to God. break, but there's a lot of street language, right? There's the like the the, the glossary of words. E40 wrote a whole book of slanguage, like so. It's there. Ah, see, he says that they use this to designate someone who's fearless, mentally strong, and tough. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Right? Oh, yeah. bud. Come on now. Oh, my gosh. This article, they actually write it out many times. God, wow. What is this? TheCleaveScene.com? Man, that is uh, some hard-hitting journalism right there. My Lord. All right. Uh, Shohei Otani's interpreter. Um, it's starting to look more and more uh, like this guy probably just stole his money. <laughs> we'll get to that next here. Sports Sunday, 1080 The Fan. Coastal is here to help you tackle any task this spring.
catch the fever. Gosh, I remember. Oh, I'm uh, Arizona and how, Colorado. The how last well hopes. we we've talked a whole lot about you know the Pac-12 moving, or at least most of the Pac-12 moving over to the Big Ten, and you know we talked a lot about in the realm of college football, but in a struggling Pac-12 for basketball, because it's been struggling for the past couple of years now, you know, as far as trying to... um, They've gotten some good recruits, but for whatever reason, teams just haven't been able to do the job that I think a lot of people within the conference expect them to do. Do y'all expect that to get better playing against, you know, the... you know the Mind you, the Big Ten isn't what it used to be in basketball as far as the Michigans, Ohio States, but it's still Michigan and Ohio State, and if we're struggling... Uh, as far as Oregon and Oregon State against the Washingtons and the you know Arizona States and Arizonas of the conference, how how well do you expect them to do? And you you actually watch college basketball, Joe, you know. So how well do you expect them to do? Because I already don't watch college basketball like that. Now we talked about it during the break. Like I'm paying paying more attention to the women's tournament than I am to the men's this year because. It's more stars in the women's game. So that's kind of why I'm watching that at this point. So I'm a little – how do you feel like college basketball is going to look as they move to this Big Ten? Um, well, Big Ten is kind of weird lately. I mean, I mean, Purdue, is it more so just like they're catching fire with Zach Eady and Matt Painter just for this run, and then they are going to kind of return to that middle of the pack. Michigan, they hired Florida Atlantic's head coach, Dustin May after uh, Florida Atlantic has been knocked out of the tournament. Michigan, God, they need to turn around immediately because did not work out well with Juwan Howard now, did it? See him sock that fool that one time? My God. Um, Juwan Howard's a big-ass dude, too. Like, he's like 6'10", like 6'11". Like, he's oh, not, yeah. He's not small. Maryland, down year. Uh, Michigan State, yeah, they made the tournament and got a win, but they were 20-15 and 15 this year. The Hoosiers and Mike Woodson, like, they need to kind of turn the tide there. So, I mean... It's maybe a good time for Oregon. Uh, Washington, dear God, I mean, they'd need a lot of things to start going right for their program. But maybe it's a good time for Oregon to jo- join the Big Ten as far as basketball goes. Now, when we're talking about, like, Colorado and Big 12, Big 12 is basically, like, they're hanging their hat and being on for being sure. a basketball conference. For sure. Yeah. And that's paying off for them. Uh, so, for the Big Ten, though, I mean, eh, we'll see. We'll see how it pays off. And as far as the comp- I, I don't feel as bad as you know, or uh, less confident as I would in maybe years past, because yeah, I would like I was saying, Michigan, Maryland, you know, Illinois is having a good year as well, but Michigan State and Thomas, some of these programs are uh, they're in a weird spot too. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm cool with it. And as far as the competition goes that they've had, I, I do feel like they've had to deal with really good, the Kevin Love-led UCLA Bruins at the t- you know, a lot of good Arizona teams that have already yeah, been Arizona, in the conference. Yeah, great all the time. Yeah. yeah, Washington was good about a decade ago. You know, had the likes of it's Brandon Roy. After that, you got you know Isaiah Thomas. There were good players that came through this conference that I, I feel like, you know, if I'm just looking through my Oregon Ducks lens, it's like, okay, I think there's similar competition that they're moving over to face. And I don't think Dana Altman, who's from that part of the country anyways, I don't think that concerns him whatsoever, if anything, because he's kind of ingrained in that basketball scene, might give him a little bit of an advantage moving into the Big Ten for the Ducks. Like, that's awesome. I love it. And like I said, I'm Team Altman. So let's go. All right, I want to get to this real quick because on Wednesday, the story broke on Shohei Otani uh, being linked to an illegal uh sports book a legal bookmaker in newport california uh four and a half million dollars was apparently sent to him and then it turns out oh no it was his translator and a lot of back and forth initially the translator comes out and says yeah shohei helped me pay for these debts he wired the guy 4.5 million and five hundred thousand dollar installments you know i was there i saw him do it next day he comes out and then says, oh, yeah, Shohei Otani, he knew nothing about this. He knew nothing about the gambling debts. He knew nothing about this. You know, he he's all good. And so then uh, immediately the red flags come up, and that's where the conspiracy theories start swirling. Like, all right, was Shohei actually placing these bets through his translator, his interpreter? And now his interpreter is trying to cover up for Shohei. The more that comes out about uh, Ipe Muzahara, the uh, interpreter for Shohei Otani, I think this dude is just a straight-up liar. Like, 
I was on on uh, the hot corner on Wednesday, and Patrick brought him up. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, he's from the States. Like, he went to UC Riverside. Right. UC Riverside, spokesman says, our university records do not show we a student by the name of Ipe Mizahara having attended UC Riverside. We don't know this fool. At all. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not good. His background, like, in his uh, biographic section in, like, the uh, Angels Media uh, Guide, that they have at the stadium showing like where these people, you know, where they've worked. It said that he had worked for the Red Sox at one point. We don't know this fool. <laughs> they have now come out and said, yeah, we don't know. They, he was never an interpreter for anybody on this team at any point. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if the Yankees have come out with a statement yet. Cause it said that he worked with the Yankees in a small capacity during spring training a few years back. But uh, listen, I'm going to go ahead and bank on the fact that he also did not work for the Yankees at this point. And as uh, more starts to come out about Ipe Mizuhara, the better this looks for Shohei Otani and that it's a good chance that this dude did just, in fact, take money somehow, some way, stole money from Shohei Otani to cover his gambling bets. But there is an inv- investigation still going down. Um but yeah, I mean, this Ife is like he has basically lied his about his whole career and background, and now I, I don't know what to believe. Did did Shohei know about the debts? Did he not? Did he pay it? Did uh, Ipe just take the money himself and pay for it uh, on his own accord? Does he even know Japanese? Does he even interpret for Shohei at all? Does he just say just just generic statements like Shohei says something in Japanese and he's like, uh. Yeah, he says that uh, he's a big fan of baseball and he's going to try really hard. Like, is he just going and giving the most? And I, I was reading something last night that basically Japanese people that follow Shohei and Ipe, they said that, like, he isn't actually that good of a translator at all either. That, like, there was um, a report, like, somewhere, like, oh, yeah, someone's mom was saying, like, oh, yeah, well, at least he'll be able to get a better interpreter now. So maybe this dude doesn't isn't even a good interpreter after all. And he got, <laughs> well, he, I mean... If if he's an interpreter, he got Shohei paid, you know. Uh, well, he got initially. himself paid. That's for got sure. Got himself I mean... paid, but it's it shines a light. I was watching this little thing on Netflix, and it's about this girl who basically claimed to be an heiress for years, and you know was able to get herself into all of the circles, all the elite circles that they needed to, just being a con artist. There are some people that are just great at being a con artist, and I'm so, how how do you say Shohei's uh interpreter's name you're talking about anna sorkin. Is a anna, Dor- yes. anna sorkin yeah yeah, yeah the new york uh, elite socialist con yeah. artist who said that she was connected to wealthy families and like royalty from and from I'm yeah figuring European out how countries. much people don't do background checks yeah because no one's ever asked who that lady's dad was or anything like that and it had something had to happen you know before somebody was finally like this guy never went to uc riverside or this guy never all you said that's in the 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 um, part of the bio about the interpreter is in the program that fans get as you're coming to the game, right? Nobody from the major from major leagues was like, this isn't true. He's never worked for, and mind you, Shohei was drafted in 2017? Yeah, something like, yeah. So I it's been a minute, right. right? So now that we're talking about seven years now. Or that, signed, rather. Yeah, so yeah. it's talking about seven years now. that but- This guy has been able to been around major league baseball and around professional teams and serving as an interpreter for one of the arguably the but no, I don't think it's arguable. Is it arguably the best baseball player in the world? Uh, right now, no. Fi- I don't think I think he's there's ten I heard a radio host sum this up perfectly. There are like ten big names in baseball. Shohei Otani himself is bigger than those ten names. So so like he's bigger than Aaron Judge and Julio Rodriguez and so, all these guys combined. And, so we can make make the argument some people out there probably disagree but he's the best player in baseball yes today you know this this man his his interpreter has been around him for years making deals and like i said not even that great of an interpreter you know for a lot of people so it's just really showing that even at the top levels somebody's not doing a background check really somebody's though? not checking citing their you know somebody's not really citing well, it sources wasn't so much like I don't know. Like, it, it was in the media guide, so it's like, how much are these people yeah. just kind of taking their word for it? And then, you know, like, oh, okay, well, now we well, have to call UC Riverside. And guys, see, you know. my conspiracy hat is still on here. I do wonder why all of this information is coming out now. It, it just seems like it's all too perfect, in my opinion, 
that this is now just allegedly all on this guy and oh we're starting to find lies from his past and 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 I I I understand that maybe there was lack of a background check by one organization but three or four or five in major league baseball like we've seen major fails the Arizona Diamondbacks fired local product Wally Backman two days after hiring him as manager because they didn't check on his DUI history and didn't realize he had filed for bankruptcy recently. Like, like there are things that teams don't do, but I feel like we've, that was like in the 2000s. We've gotten past this point to where 30 teams or or a good chunk of those teams aren't doing background checks on this guy? Come and on, and I don't believe that. But but I'm saying, but we're, we're starting to find out how how easy it is for somebody to come and present themselves in such a way to make you fit, make you think that, they belong, right? That was the whole Anna Sorgan thing. She made herself uh, look like she actually belonged in the elite. Like, here's somebody who, you know, speaks the language and knows what to say and knows people and had was at least close enough to one organization at some point to be able to kind of create some type of buzz for themselves. Like, this is con artist one con artistry one on one. Like, and that's exactly what it seems like at this point. Like, Shohei. I don't, he could be a gambler. You know, there's a very good chance like some of those bets were show haste. Like, I mean, we have to be honest about that. There's a, there's a good chance that some of those bets, you know, were his. I doubt it though, because this is what con artists do. They get people, they, they build trust and everything. And then eventually somebody's taking money, you know, from you. And I feel like this young man just, just, just ran into the wrong one. At this point, but I feel like this is only going to get weirder. And we just we know what we know over the last, what, four days? Yeah, five since days? Wednesday. Yeah. yeah so I, I can almost guarantee that we're going to find out much more as in, in the coming days, especially as the season is really, really getting started. Apparently, uh, it's also a Japanese news station uh, reported on him at some point. And uh, I mean, I don't know when this video is from, but he worked part time at a sushi restaurant near L.A. back in 2006 to 2009 and went to school for casino industry, Mm. whatever the hell that means, uh, but dropped out because he wasn't good. This is uh, there's this YouTube video of a uh, Japanese uh, like uh, news report. Again, I I, I'm going to need a few hours for so long. Weird. You can only fake stuff for so long, man. Like, I mean, seriously, like at a point, you've got to be great at what you like. If he was an amazing interpreter, which as I'm reading, it doesn't sound like there are a lot of people that really felt like he was, you know, things would be different. If you were a great businessman, things would be different. But I don't know. Like when you're not good at what you do, people eventually figure it out. You yeah. can't talk. You can only talk what your way around stuff for so long. This has just led me now into this YouTube rabbit hole of watching Japanese news broadcasts of talking to like I. I hope I can get like the transcript. Well, I need an interpreter now is what I need for this because they are doing the deep dive on this guy. Like they've got clips and all. They got oh yeah, they've got a man on the street doing interviews. Look at uh, in, J- in Japan. Yeah, they got the the whole panel here. This is like basically their PTI in Japan. It looks like. Seriously, now I'm what starting a story. to think. After hearing this and after watching the Anna Sorgan thing, I'm like, bro, I could really fake it into whatever industry I want to. Just say you say the right. Just do say the research, went to, went to the, school for casino. Do industry. the research. Say the right things. Know the research the people that I'm trying to you know be in business with. Like. Why not? We've been taking this hard route with with hard work, <laughs> and it's apparently that's not the route to go. <laughs> yeah, just uh, totally fool people and pull them over. Uh, I guys, I still think that there's there's something seedy that's going to come out. Like even further, I think there's there's something deeper to this story, and I don't think the media is going to make this go away. The Dodgers, little little plants, they're going to try all they can, but I do not think this is just going to disappear. Oh, okay, I'll he's say just this. a con artist. If this were, if he were still in Anaheim. I think it'd be a big deal, and because he's Shohei, it'd still be a big deal because he plays for the Dodgers now. Because if if the Dodgers, Yankees, I guess you know Astros, some of like the 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 bigger more, con- please, like they're going to make if if the guy plays for the Lakers or the Knicks or the Celtics, much bigger story than if you played for Charlotte or you know someone else like that. So yeah, I think brand branding matters too because now this is not just an um, an Angels issue. This is a 
Yeah, this is a, this is a Dodgers issue. Not exactly what you want to be the biggest story in your sport. Uh, literally days before your season starts, either probably not, not. exactly the best press. Uh, after yeah, one of the biggest names, if not the biggest name in your sport, uh, is. Uh, linked to all of this and his interpreter, like I said, just days before things get kicked off with the first pitch. Well, first pitch actually did start already. Well, yeah, funny how ESPN wanted to put this story out there on day one of this Soul Series. Yes. So, uh, timing, yeah. All right, we're way over it. Let's take a break. Who bites someone? Honestly, we get to that next year. But first, Jordan Schultz with a Sports Center update. Now, now, from the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. First on the fan, the Oregon Ducks giving it their all last night against Creighton, but unfortunately just running out of energy in double overtime to take the loss. 86-73 to the final. Jermaine Cousinard and Infali Dante combining for 60 points, but the Ducks just didn't get much from anyone else on the roster. The Blue Jays moving on to the Sweet 16 to face Tennessee. One game going on right now in the NCAA tourney on the men's side, Colorado. A 10 seed facing off against a number two seed Marquette out of the South region. Pretty close right now with just under 13 minutes to go in the second half. Marquette leads the Buffs 58 to 55. And on the women's side of things, the Oregon State Beavers facing off against Nebraska in the round of 32. They were a seven and a half point favorite. Tip off for that one at 1 p.m. On ESPN and the association going on today as well. The Portland Trailblazers becoming only the second team in the last 50 years to start an all rookie lineup. They lost to the Denver Nuggets by three, 114 to 111 the final. They're off before heading to Houston to face the Rockets tomorrow. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. I'm Schultz at the 1080 The Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand on the Odyssey app, the fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. The home of primetime with Isaac and Sue. Weekdays 3 to 7, 1080.
in one and a half rounds of MMA fighting. Uh, Real quick. Yeah. I, what, what are we doing? What are we doing, guy? So last night, uh, what is it? Uh, I think it was a fight night in Las Vegas, a UFC fight night. Um, I'm going to knock it out like fight night. Can't say that full lyric. No. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, can I say it? Can I say it, my my teammates, please? Um, no, no, you can't. Let's see. Say it. <laughs> say it. Go ahead. Igor, <laughs> Igor Severino. Oh, his name is Igor. That's not shocking at all. Of uh, well, of formerly UFC was fighting Andrew Lima. This was both their first fight in UFC MMA fighters' first UFC fights. Uh, so what happens? Is I was not watching this. I did not see the fights. I did not how things were progressing. This was the second fight of the undercard. So as far as uh, you know, give an F level, very low, very low on the give a uh, give an F scale. But halfway through the second round, they're kind of grappling. They're up against the fence, and then Andre Lima is like, "Yo!" starts pointing to the ref, like starts pointing at his arm, like, "Dude, hey." This guy, Igor, he bit Andre Lima in the arm, like right at the bicep. And so then they stop the fight and sure as ass, there is a bite mark. Like he chomped down on this dude's bicep and Igor gets d disqualified. Dana White already ends his contract. He was probably only paying him $10 for this fight anyways, but that's a whole nother point. But already ends his contract immediately and the dude... Not even two full rounds into his his MMA or his UFC debut, disqualified, contract taken away, and uh, Andre Lima he went up and ended up getting a tattoo Smart. of the bite marks on nice. his bicep. Hell yeah, nice. Which at first thought was like eh, that's kind of unsanitary if you know like he just bit there like a few hours ago. But they do clean off the area for tattoos. You know they get give you the alcohol, the iodine wipe or whatever it is. Um, but then he got a tattoo of it, and I believe it said, uh, I got effing bit bonus. And Dana says that he, Dana says that he's going to give the man $50,000 for getting bit, apparently. Um, that's a huge increase over probably the $15 that he was going to pay him for that fight anyways. But who bites someone, honestly? Uh, you fight like a girl, like I mean, and ladies can Whoa! fight. Speaking, speaking of the ladies, there was the I think the main event that's, was that that's night. That's sexist, and, brother. Uh, well, I'm finishing the line from whatever. Either way, uh, <laughs> man, like there's digging that hole. If you see the bite marks, like there was no mouthpiece in there. Like you really, really chomped down. Yeah, and, where, and really good bit point. Him. Where's the mouthpiece in this situation? Like, how do you bite down on someone yeah. like that? Yeah, I thought so they hard. were required to have those. Yeah. But I, I'm not a fight like. Aficionado. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the the imprint, like it it was a top and bottom bite mark, right? So at least at least the top teeth are supposed to be covered by the mouthpiece, bare minimum. But uh, yeah, that was my big thing. Is like, how did he get out of the out of the corner without a mouthpiece in? So th sometimes desperation makes you do crazy things. I will say this: if I'm in a street fight, and I am I am in a predicament or in a position that I cannot get out of. The only thing I can do is to bite this person's arm or wherever to get, guess what? Guess who's biting somebody, fellas? I am. Dude, but that's, in a, of up. course, I yeah. would too in a, in a situation in a where you need to. a sanctioned fight? Yeah. Yeah, you probably should be. And this is your first fight. So this is what we call grand opening, grand closing. Was this his first fight for this, this card? This is his first UFC, first UFC, UFC fight. match. He was like 8-1 and one, uh, in MMA fights. What a wuss. I'm kind of glad that he has to walk through the rest of his life knowing that his anger and biting and lack of control, because that's an anger problem, right. dude. That's I'm getting beat, I'm really pissed about it, so I'm going to take it out on you in a physical way that I can at that point, which is I'm going to bite you. Sorry, I, I've now embarrassed you a little bit. No, actually, you've ultimately embarrassed yourself even more and i am here for it you go to bellator well uh, hey dana brought up a good point it's like hey now he's got to deal with nevada state athletic commission oh yeah because this is a, it being a fight night or should i say bite night is this uh took I see, place I see what you did there yep yep well you know i just saw it on twitter so i can't even take full credit for it you shouldn't have told me i would I know, have completely I know. believed it was you hey i i have integrity as a journalist i have integrity Man, you okay. tripping i use lines all the time that aren't mine 
Uh, people think I'm so hilarious and, <laughs> man, seriously, so witty. I'm not. Just someone tells a joke and then you say the same joke a I, second seriously, later. I am the like, Steve dude, Harvey. Rashad, I am the Steve you Harvey are of radio joke. Yeah, I'm taking everybody's jokes and using them as my own. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's the thing is that no because this here, happened Jordan. in Nevada, like you're uh, probably looking at not being able to fight in Nevada. Yeah, again. you look. You're you're back to you know backyard brawls like Kimbo, you know, and then, you know, seriously, <laughs> like... Well, they do stuff up in Minnesota still, right, with uh, some of the wrestling federations there? He can come here. He can come here in Portland. Know. He can fight suit. He's going to have to look for uh, some other states to fight in. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, you're welcome here in Oregon, man. <laughs> have the, the, the no, rumble at the I Roseland. I don't want to bite her here. Stay the hell out, dude. We don't need that kind of human being. Seriously. No, I just... Full we stop. We don't need biters in, in any sense of the in word. any sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, y- you've heard of that kid at the playground or at preschool that they're a biter. Nobody likes that one. That, or, they're, they're getting the write-ups, going back home to the parents. They're like, yeah, little Timmy, he had to go in timeout today. Uh, he He's a biter. And that when you hear that as a parent, you're like, oh no. Or Timmy's sister Tammy, she's a biter too. Not <laughs> you know, like, and that's not. It's never a good thing. Jake the hater saying Rashad the Carlos Mencia of 1080 the fans. Boom, just stealing See? jokes. <laughs> Jake gets it. Jake gets it. I've been stealing his stuff for years, man. <laughs> oh god. All right. Shout out to my guy Jake the hater. We're up against it. Let's wrap things up here. Sports Sunday, 1080 the fan. Tony Spencer here.
So clean. One for one over here. <laughs> I just nailed that uh, wadded up piece of paper in the wastebasket over there. This one, but looks like somebody needs it. So yeah, it looks like some reeds here. Yeah. Here, let's try. I'll just grab this random one. I'll go two for two. Let's Live on air. Live on air. Kobe. Oh. Oh, I didn't crumple that up enough. Yeah, that was, it was a little loose. Aerodynamics was weren't good on that one. There. I got I got hacked on the arm, fouled. Ugh. All right. Okay, Chris. Chris Paul. Sorry, <laughs> turn my mic off. Yeah, where's Scott Foster to bail me out here? <laughs> yeah, seriously. They really hate each other. Like I can imagine, like like a teacher that you don't like when those referees show up on days, and you look at the, you know, you're looking at the roster and the game sheets for and everything for the day. It's like. Ugh. Um, who's the ref today? Speaking of gambling, though, this is just kind of making uh, making the rounds right now. They were on. I don't know if this was on ESPN, ESPN two. I think it was on ESPN. They were doing a uh, ESPN's Reese Davis after an ESPN bet segment with Aaron Dolan. So they were talking about some different gambling angles here on uh, ESPN. Reese Davis, he says after getting some betting advice, you know, Aaron Dolan saying, you know, take this, take that, bet on this, bet on that. He goes, you know what? Some would call this wagering, gambling. The way you've sold this, I think what it is is a risk-free investment. <laughs> I think they, uh, I'm pretty sure in most of like the gambling um, disclaimers and everything, they say, this is not an investment. Pretty sure it's a, yeah, <laughs> Do not the use gambling. That's a take their risk. God. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, the gambling is not uh, for investment purposes, I believe, is exactly what they say. And, uh, yeah, Reese Davis and ESPN are getting absolutely dragged for this. Maybe um, he was saying it tongue-in-cheek, you know, right? Maybe maybe that's what he was kind of saying. Again, like, this a is joke, uh, a joke. This is just making the rounds right now on uh, the, the social medias. So I guess this is breaking news on Tenny the Fan, brought to you by BetQL. Smarter bets. Sm start with BetQL. <laughs> Download the BetQL app or visit BetQL.com today. Anybody get that? No? No. No? No. Breaking news. Oh, boy. I will say, though, being at the sports book on March Madness, it's a movie. That was good times. A I lot of imagine. good people up there. And uh, Super Alien Chef Bobby Flay, is... Chris Daughtry, Mark it, it Cuban. Was it, was it was insane. It was insane. It was insane. It was insane. All right. Her bonita fish big. <laughs> no, yeah. um, I can imagine. And and to be honest, for a, 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 for a local... Casino, their sports book isn't half bad. I that's the only sports book sports I've been book to huge. In, really in this area. Oh, okay. I mean, I know that uh, Spirit Mountain I think has a sports book. They now. do. Um, not really sure what Chinook Winds is rocking with. Um, I want to say there's a casino down in Florence. Uh, Seven Feathers, I believe, is what you're thinking of. Right? Uh, I don't know if it's Seven Feathers. I'm gonna have to look this or, up. There's one in like Coos Bay on the water. There's Seven possibly, Feathers. There's, yeah. Possibly. Um, they closed Canada. So years ago. Oh, I think they're opening it back, though, right? I don't know uh, if they're opening the casino. But no, 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 sure. no, no. Yeah, no casino. It's uh, Three Rivers ah. is in uh, Florence. I'm pretty sure they have a golf course there too. Well, and literally, we I just think someone's making a trip to yeah. Florence. Hello. We just named all of our options. They have so many more up in the state of Washington. So to have Alan A with that massive sports book, I mean, guys, the chairs are so comfortable. You don't, you, you can always go with a couple of buddies, but if like you're kind of sitting, the wife's gone, it's like, I don't know what to do. Go sit in one of those chairs on your own, throw a couple of bets down, and grab a cheap beer at Alan A. Like, it's really nice. Okay. You can watch every. Yeah, cool. Okay, they do have a sports book at this Three Rivers Casino, but just looking at the pictures, yeah, it, it ain't holding a candle to what mm -hmm. Alan A's. It's a sports got. magazine. Yeah, it's, it's not um, a book. the TV sizes. It's, yeah, no, Alan A's taking the cake so far. Um, yeah, I'll have to hit up Spirit Mountain, though, here soon, just because my sister lives right out there in Willamina. Which is, you know, two shakes of a uh, lamb's tail from there. Let me know. I'll head out there with you, brother. It's like 90. No, not even 90. It's like an hour from door to door from my house. And after so. uh, how things went at the blackjack table at Alan A, too, I think uh, Fisher, he's got to find his way I'm a craps there guy. a little bit more Let's often. go, Rashad. Let me at the craps table, man. And we'll hit Alan A up. We'll hit Spirit Mountain up. Then we'll, we'll go back to Alan A. Up. Yeah, I'm with it. All right. Guys, night out. Woo! Field trip. Let's take a party bus out to uh, Sheridan. Huh? I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm down. Uh, I'm, I might not be. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'd have to think about it. But listen, I'd, I only go to Willamina because I have. It to depends there. on what's on the schedule for the for the weekend. But yeah, 
All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the madness the rest of the day. Colorado is stormed back in this one. They're only down three to Marquette, 72 to 69. Nice. Uh, less than five minutes left to go on that one. Uh, old Marquette, tough bucket right there, fighting through the big Good. guy. Uh, so enjoy the madness the rest of the day, and then we get a few days off, and then hopefully I'll see some of you Thursday out at X-Golf Tualatin. Uh, Danny and Dusty, Isaac and Suk will be there. And then you'll see the rest of the crew over there at uh, Vancouver X Golf on Friday. But Rashad, thank you as always. Glad to have you back. My man, good to see you guys. Jordan Schultz, nice to see you again. Love you both. Rashad, love you. Good to have you My back. My man, brother. good luck. All right, we'll catch you guys all next Sunday. Peace. So, how's your research going? Surprising. After I figured out the top rated TVs in our price range, I went shopping for deals.